This is exercise one for posting the cash receipts and cash payments journal to the general ledger. The first thing we want to do is we want to take note of the name of the business. This exercise, it's Flintstone Services. And we make our way over to our answer sheet and we fill in Flintstone Services under the section where it says general ledger of, and we fill in just the name of the business. You'll notice I've written the word debit on the left hand side, DR, and credit on the right hand side, CR. In future exercises, I will only refer to DR and CR for debit and credit. Now, when I'm looking at debit, I'm meaning that I'm going to be recording my information on the left hand side of this page. If I say credit, it means I'm going to be recording the information on the right hand side of the page. So you'll notice that the column headings date, day, details, folio, and amount are repeated on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So debit means we will record the information on this side of the line. You'll notice I filled it in red. And credit means we'll record on this side of the line. And that's all we meaning by debit or credit. What side of the page are we going to fill our information in on? If we have a look, um, you will see that any column heading, I have highlighted the total of that column. And any amount in sundries, I have highlighted the individual amount. I've done it for the receipts and the cash payments journal. So all of our columns, so bank to stationery, I've highlighted the totals. Anything in sundry account, I've highlighted the individual amount. The first thing we want to do is we want to work out the order in which we're going to be drawing up the general ledger. Now, if I look at the answer sheet, you will see that the account um, number, the unique code for each account, has already been filled in for you. We do that to help you in grade 8, but in grade 9 and 10, 11 and 12, however many years you'll take accounting for, um, you are expected to be able to work out what that code would be. It's very simple. We use our notes. And we've got balance sheet section. Our very first account always is capital. So the very first one in balance sheet would be B1. Whatever comes next, if there's drawings, that would be B2. If there's no drawings, the next one would be B2. And we number first account B1, then we go on to B2, B3, B4, B5, all the way down until we've run out of balance sheet accounts. We will then move on to nominal account section. The first one will be N1, and we'll go on to N2, N3, N4. Um, if we don't have a particular account, we just leave it out. So if we look at the balance sheet section, capital comes first. So we look for capital. It's in the cash receipts journal, and we fill in our code, B1. Capital occurs more than once, so I make the account code more than once. Every time for capital, that's B1. We then look, do we have any drawings? Drawings would be B2. We don't have drawings. We then look to see, do we have any fixed assets? Do we have land and buildings? No. Do we have equipment? Yes. Over here, we have equipment. It's under sundry. So I can fill in B2. Do we have vehicles? Yes, we do. That would be B3. We then have to look at current assets. Do we have trading stock? No, not in this exercise. We've got trading license, but that's not the same thing. Do we have debtors control? No. Do we have bank? Well, yes, we've got a bank account um, in the cash receipts journal, a whole column, and we've got bank accounts listed in the cash payments journal. So for both accounts, we want to fill in B4 and B4. We then have a look, do we have cash flow or petty cash? And we don't. We then move on to the nominal account section. So current income is the first income that we have. So we will make that N1. Rent income is the next income. So we will make that N2. Anything that's left over is an expense. And so we start from our column. You'll notice we've done both those accounts, and we've done all of those accounts in the CRJ. So we're left with expenses, so material costs. In two comes in three. 
after n3 comes n4, after n4 comes n5. Move up here, after n5 comes n6, and after n6 comes n7, and I look rent expenses listed twice, so I repeat the code if it's the same account. Those codes match up, B1, B2, B3, B4, N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, N6, N7. Those are our accounts from our journals. We're now going to look at the posting rule. And if we look at our notes, the posting rule is, this is the exact same rule as the account debit account credit. If we post from the cash receipts journal, we are going to debit bank and credit the other account. So we go to the cash receipts journal, we're going to debit bank, so cash receipts journal, and the bank, we write DR for debit, we debit bank, and every other amount in the cash receipts journal is going to be recorded on the credit side. Credit, credit, credit. If we post from the cash payments journal, it swaps around. Instead of debiting bank, we are going to credit bank. So we credit bank and we debit everything else in the cash payments journal. So I'm going to go debit, 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 debit. The last thing we want to take note of before we start putting the information into our general ledger. If it is a column, so in the cash receipts journal, bank and current income are columns. You post the total of the column. If it's in sundry, you post the individual amount on the specific day. So you would need to know how many days are in July. July has 31 days so we are going to post our columns on the 31st of july and then um sundry accounts um we post on the specific day so this capital will be on the first that one will be on the seventh that one will be on the 23rd then the next thing i want to mention is that we start with our accounts in order. So the first one is balance sheet, so B1. So we're gonna post that information first. We are posting two transactions into capital. We're trying to work out what is the total value of capital in our business in July, 2020. Now, I'm going to move to my answer book. I'm looking at the credit side of the page Credit side is the right-hand side. What does the information ask for? It asks for the date. Well, it's 2020 July. If you can't fit the month in, some months are very long. You just need the first three um, letters of the month. We then look at the day. What day is the first transaction on for capital? It's day one. So we record day one. The details section is asking for the partner account. What account partners with capital? Well, in grade eight, it's really great because we're able to see every single amount is actually recorded in bank and somewhere else. So bank is the partner account. An easier way to think of it is if I receive money, where is that money stored? Well, it's stored in my bank account. If I pay money, where is the money come from? Well, it's come from my bank account. So bank is the partner account. Folio, F-O-L, short for folio. What is the journal code where this information is coming from? Well, have a look. And my code is CRJ7. And then we fill in the amount. How much money was invested in the business? 80,000 Rand. 
We then move on to the next transaction. You can repeat the year and month if you want, but you don't have to. The next one is on day seven. Yes, day seven, it's 20,000 Rand. When the money was received, where did we put it? We put it in the bank account. The code is CRJ7 and we received 20,000 Rand. At the end of the month, in other words, we've got no more transactions for capital this month. You're going to take your ruler and you're going to take your pen or pencil. I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker so you can see it. And you're going to underline the column that is called totaling. And all we do is we add up the values. And we get the total value for capital in the business at the end of July is 100,000 Rand. We then move on to our next account, equipment. We have a look, which journal is equipment recorded in? And I have a look and I find it, it's in the cash payments journal. It is a sundry account, which means I'm gonna post this information on the specific day. The posting rule tells me this needs to go on the debit side. So I go to the debit side, remember, debit is the left. What is the date? 2020, July. What is the specific day that we purchased equipment on? And that was day 21. Where did the money come from? It came from my bank account. What is my journal code? CPJ7. And how much did we buy or we purchased 2,000 rand? We then have a look, is there any more equipment for the month? No more equipment was purchased. So if there's just one line of information, we don't have to total it. We can see what the total is. When there's more than one amount on the same side, we total it. We move on to vehicles. We have a look and we see which journal is vehicles recorded in, and it's recorded in the cash payments journal. That tells me the rule is debit, it's 43,000 Rand, and the specific day is day three. So we need to be on the debit side, the left-hand side. We fill in 2020, July. The date, I've already forgotten it, is day three. Oops. Day three. Where did the money come from? It came from my bank account. That is the partner account. The journal, CPJ7. And we spent 43,000 Rand on our motor vehicle. We then move on. We're going to come back to bank. Current income. Current income is recorded in the cash receipts journal. It is a column. So we're going to be posting this on the last day of the month. It is going on the credit side. So I'm in the cash receipts journal. Credit side is right. So we fill in the date, 2020, July the 31st. Bank, that's where we put the money we receive. Bank is the partner account. Cash receipts, journal seven, and the total of that column was 4,200. That's how much money we um, receive for services rendered. Because there's only one line of information, we don't have to total it. We can see what the total is. We then move on to the next account, rent income. We have a look, which journal is rent income recorded in? It's recorded in the cash receipts journal. It's in sundry accounts, so we're taking the information on that specific day, the 23rd. Rent income, it's going on the credit side for 4,500. So, 2020, July 23rd. Money went into our bank account, CRJ7. 
We've done our incomes. Everything that's left is an expense. So we have a look. What journal has got material costs in? If we look, you'll see. We've already done current income. We've already done capital and we've done rent income. We're coming back to bank. So we move on to material costs. So everything from now is going to be cash payments journal. The rule for cash payments journal tells me when I do material costs, it goes on the debit side. It's a column. So I take the total of the column on the last day of the month. So I go to material costs, whoops, the last day of the month on the debit side, debit being left 2020 July the 31st bank is the partner account CPJ seven and the total of the column is 14,000. There are no more transactions. So I don't total because there's only one line of information. I move on to wages. Wages is recorded as a column. So I take the total of the column, 1,200, the end of the month. It is going on the debit side. So I go on the debit side, 2020, July 31st. CPJ seven, and the total for the column is 1,200. We are then going to do the same for stationery. Stationery is a column, so I'm taking the total of the column at the end of the month. It's going on the debit side. So I go to my answer sheet. I'm on the debit side, the left hand side. 2020, July 31st. Bam. It's coming from CPJ7, and the total for that column. There's 1,350. I move on to trading license. Trading license is a sundry account amount. So that means I'm going to post that 400 Rand in trading license on the first, not a column. So not the last day of the month. It is going on the debit side. So we're on the debit side. 2020 July, we're posting it on that specific day, which is the first. Our partner account is bank, the journal code CPJ7, and the amount is 400. Our last one, we're on to rent expense. Rent expense is in the cash payments journal, sundry accounts. So I'm going to take the amount on the specific day. There are two different amounts that I'm posting. So day 12 and day 28, and it's going on the debit side. So I'm on the left-hand side, left-hand side, 2020, July. The first transaction is on day 12. The partner account is bank, CPJ7, and the amount is 1,200. The next one for rent expense is on day 28. Our account is bank. The journal is CPJ7. And the amount is 1,200. When I have more than one amount in an account on the same side, I take my ruler, I underline just once, and I add the two amounts up to get the total, 2,400. So if I had to look at this, the total of capital is a hundred thousand rand. The total of equipment is two thousand rand. The total of vehicles is forty three thousand rand. Coming back to bank, the total of current income is forty two thousand. The total of rent income is 45,000. The total of material costs, 14,000. Wages, 1,200. Stationery, 1,350. Trading license, 400. And rent expense, 2,400.
I'm just right aligning my figures. I just like to do that um, on the computer. As long as you've written it in the box, it's okay. You don't need to write the RAND sign. We're in South Africa, so we assume the currency is RAND. If it wasn't RAND, then I guess you'd have to fill in the, um, the currency. So you'll notice we either post information on the left, the left hand side or the right hand side. The left hand side is the debit side. The right hand side is the credit side. Every other account, capital equipment, all of their partner accounts is bank. And we fill in bank as the partner account. In the double entry principle, it means that if I credit this amount in capital, I would need to debit that amount in bank. If I credit this amount in capital, I would need to debit that amount in bank. For equipment, I've debited that amount in equipment. I would need to credit that amount in bank. For vehicles, if I've debited that amount for vehicles, I would need to credit that amount in bank. So every single amount is going to be recorded once on the left-hand side and once on the right-hand side. That will mean if I added every single value on the left-hand side and every single value on the credit side, they should balance. When we get to bank, because bank is a column, you'll see here, it's a column, and over here, it's a column. I cannot, I must post the total amount at the end of the month, but I can't write bank in bank. Bank is not its own partner account. And I can't write just capital or just rent income because it's a whole lot of different things. So what we do is when we post the total of the bank column in the cash receipts journal, we are going to post it on the debit side. So we know the, the year, we know the month. We know it's a column, so it's the 31st. We know the journal is the cash receipts journal. And we know the total of the column. What I write here is total receipts. It means that if I took this amount, 108,700 cash receipts journal, that amount is also going to be reflected on the credit side. It is reflected in the credit side here, 100,000. 4,200 and 4,500. So 108,700, we've got 100,000. That would be 104,200. That would take me up to 108,700. So that value is recorded once on the debit side in bank and it's recorded in the credit side of each of the individual accounts. I'm now going to post the total of bank from the cash payments journal. It goes on the credit side. It's a column. So I post the total of the column on the last day of the month. So in bank, 2020, July, the 31st. I can't say total receipts. I can't say banks. So I'm going to say total payments, CPJ7. And the total value of that bank column is 64,350. Now, I've posted that on the credit side of bank. That means if I had to add up every amount posted on the debit side from the cash payments journal, Just do that, boom, there, there, and there. If I added up all of those amounts in yellow, they would equal that amount. So when we post on the cash receipts journal, we debit bank. So I post the amount on the left-hand side of bank. We credit every other account. So we have credited capital. We have credited current income. We have credited rent income. When I post on the cash payments journal, I credit bank. That means I record the amount on the right-hand side of bank. And we debit every other account. So I debit equipment, vehicles, 
material costs, wages, stationery, trading license, and rent expense. Now, I have information on both sides of bank. I cannot total because those amounts are not the same. That's what I received. That's what I spent. I will need to work out how much money is left in my bank account at the end of the month. At the end of exercise two, before we start exercise three, we will look at how we balance bank. But for now, we are going to leave it like that. Okay, and that is exercise one.